Hi everyone, welcome to Molson Math. Today we'll be talking about the KDV equation, which looks like this. Tells us that phi dot of x and t plus the third derivative of phi with respect to x minus six phi d phi by dx is equal to zero. I would like to talk about this equation since it was pointed out to me on Reddit that one of the solutions of, the, of this, the, the soliton solution is actually identical to the potential teller potential that we did in a previous video, which was v of x is minus lambda, lambda plus one over two seek h squared x. The solution to this equation is similar to this. And in fact, it's apparently not a coincidence, which we won't be discussing on this video but I just want to see how that is possible in the first place. All right, we'll be assuming a plane wave solution. So we're going to be letting psi of x and t to be some function of x minus ct. And we're gonna call the argument capital X. Sounds good. All you have to do is transform the partial derivatives into total derivatives. We'll tra transform psi dot to be partial f by dt, which using the multivariable chain rule, total derivative of f with respect to a new variable, x minus ct times partial x minus ct by t, which you know is just minus c. This becomes minus c df by our new variable, capital X. We also want to transform the x derivative. So d psi by dx is equal to df by dx, and we use the chain rule again, partial f by partial x. Well, I don't want to use the capital X at this stage, just for clarity. Yeah, capital X, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, same way I did before. Um, total f by dx, uh, partial x minus ct by dx. And this is just one, of course, so we just get df by d capital X, and the cube derivative, similar, similar. So d cubed psi by dx cubed is just going to be partial x cubed acting on f, which we noticed earlier here was just one. So this is gonna be just d cubed f by dx cubed. Now we can go ahead and transform our equation here. So now we have minus c df by dx plus d cubed f by dx cubed minus six psi, sorry, we changed it to f. The whole point was to change it to f. Six f df by dx is equal to zero. And now we notice that actually all the terms have a derivative, so we can go ahead and integrate. And before we do that, we want to know that this term is just, we're going to write df double prime by dx. We also want to switch to the prime notation briefly. So if we integrate with respect to x, this tells us that at some constant is equal to minus c integral of df. You know what? I don't have enough room for this. Some constant equal to minus c integral df plus integral of df double prime minus six integral dff, which we recognize using the power rule. This is just simply one half f squared and six over two is three. So we have some constant is minus cf plus f double prime minus three f squared. Okay, yep, this is just equivalent to the KDV equation. We just transformed the total derivative into a partial derivative to make sure I have it right since it's pretty important. Yep, we're good to go. So we transform the partial derivative into a total derivative. Excellent, those are much easier to solve. We can just appeal to our ordinary differential equations course material. Wanna keep this up for clarity. Gotta copy it down so we can solve it. All right, so this was a constant. 
In this video, all the integration constants are going to be zero because we don't want all the solutions. We just want a particular solution. We only want one. So if we want to, we can let them be zero. Okay, the equation we'll be solving in this video is zero is equal to f double prime of capital X minus CF minus three F squared. Notice Equation looks very similar to an equation that you know, the harmonic oscillator. This is just f double prime plus omega squared f is equal to zero. We basically just have the quadratic perturbation term here, but this definitely messes up the solution. We can't assume an exponential solution since it's no longer linear. So we need a different method. Well, for that, we're going to consult one of my favorite math methods books. Mary Boas's book. In that book, she gives us a nice trick for these kind of equations. She tells us that if we have the situation here, if zero is f double prime of x plus some other function, capital F of f itself, which happens pretty frequently, then some constant is equal to one half f prime squared plus the integral with respect to f of f. And we, we, we could indeed solve the harmonic oscillator using this method. It's quite similar to what we're going to do, actually. Making sure I have it right. Yep, I've forgotten the one half before. Yeah, looks good. So now we're going to prove it as follows. So we have this. Um, we're going to write in the following form uh, d f prime by dx plus f of f. Now we're going to multiply by f prime. This gives us df prime by dx f prime, which tells us that zero is equal to this, equals zero is equal to this, plus f prime, well, yeah, I want to write f prime as df by dx. You'll see in a moment, df by dx, f. Now we are going to integrate with respect to x. Get rid of the x, only have the f's. So some constant is now equal to integral with respect to f prime of f prime plus integral of respect to f of f. And this is just one half f prime squared plus integral df of f. Great, exactly what we wanted. Fantastic, it's a great trick, great proof, love it. Very useful. Since in many situations in physics this appears, we have a second derivative and no first derivatives. This comes if you, if you have just a potential um, for f equals ma, but no driving terms, this appears pretty frequently. All right, let's just apply this to our particular example with the constant being zero again. So now we have um, zero is just equal to one half f prime squared minus the integral with respect to f of our potential, which is c f plus three f squared. Now we can do this integral. It's not that bad, not that bad. One half f prime squared minus c over two f minus, okay, the two goes with three, divides f cubed. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yep, yeah, making sure we have it right. Yep, that looks fantastic. Okay, now what we want to do is rewrite f prime as d by dx again. df by dx. That, that's a capital X. And then we want to move these over to the other side, multiply by two, and take the square root to obtain the following differential uh, relation. df by dx is equal to square root of two, square root of c over two f squared plus f cubed. Now we want to um, separate the variables, put all the f's on one side, x is on the other side, and integrate integrate with respect to x and f respectively, to obtain x is equal to one over square root of two integral d 
df by square root of c over 2f squared plus f cubed. Now this looks pretty messy. Um, we're going to be doing a few simplifications to help us out. One thing we can do is pull out the f to make it look better. c over 2 plus f. But this still doesn't look like an integral that we know. And since we want to involve a secant squared potential, we should have a secant integral somewhere. So we'll be using this integral, integral dx by x squared of a squared minus x squared is equal to 1 over a seek inverse of x over a. This is the integral that we'll be using. Yep, great. So well, we would like to put this integral into a form that can be used with that. And to do that, let's make a simple substitution. We're going to be letting f to be minus g squared. In that case, df is just minus 2g dg. And we have x is 1 over square root of 2 integral minus 2g dg over minus g squared, square root of c over 2 minus g squared. We're going to cancel the minus signs, cancel the g. We're going to take the 2 and this to combine with just make regular square root of 2. I'm going to write this as square root of c over 2 squared to get 1 over square root of 2 integral dg. We changed it to g. dg over g, square root of square root of c over 2 squared minus g squared. Yep, is this right? Exactly right. Okay, so now we can go ahead and write down our solution immediately using the integral. This tells us that x is equal to 2 over square root of c. Seek inverse square root of 2 over c g. And we can just take um, the c over 2 over here and take the secant both sides to obtain g by itself. So then g is now square root of c over 2 seek h square root of c over 2x. Good, we have x, uh, sorry, we have a g, but we don't really want g. We want f. Well, that's pretty straightforward. So f is just minus g squared, which is minus c over 2 seek h squared square root of c over 2x. And great, we have completed our solution. Notice, this is quite similar to the potential teller potential. We got a constant times secant squared. And it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting indeed. This is known as the soliton solution since it represents a, um, a traveling wave that can interact with another traveling wave, but pass through unimpeded. Very inter interesting as well. And I learned from my Reddit friends that if you know something called the inverse scattering transform. Or IST, as it's known in the literature, you can indeed take the original third order nonlinear differential equation the KDV equation, and then transform it into a Schrodinger equation with this potential directly, which of course we solved in a previous video. That's pretty cool. I don't really understand it enough to do a video on it. So if you do and want to give me a solution on, on how we can apply the inverse scattering transform to this, feel free. I would love to put it on my channel. If not, definitely thanks for sticking around and subscribe. I'll see you next time.